guitar and excel open chords c major scale f major chord fingering get ready because it's time for our guitar skills to excel here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we will simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the related scales and chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's currently four tabs down below, two example tabs, an OG tab and a blank F tab. The OG tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section, it now acting as our starting point, showing the entire fretboard giving us the full musical alphabet mapping out the scale that we're working in on and giving us our worksheets to the right in multiple formats we then copied this over to focus in on in this case the c major scale in the open position and then further focus in on the chords in the c major scale represented by the example tabs we started out with the key of c minimizing the fretboard to just see the frets zero to three open positions and then we uh, minimized so that we can see the worksheet on the right hand side giving us the scale as well as the chords that were focused in on when we were looking at the one chord now we're going to move to the four chord and do a similar process last time we copied over the og tab to the blank f tab did the similar thing meaning we minimized the fretboard to look at just the frets one through three we're still in the key of c now as we focused in on the f that is now the four of the key of c so we're going to look at the fingering but there's a couple things we just got to keep in mind uh, as we're as we're playing these chords so in this case we constructed the key of f from the uh, c major scale but when we start to talk about what's included in an f chord we're going to say it's going to be relative to the f major scale so in other words when we constructed this four chord what we did is start with the f here and pick every other note so we have the f skipped a note we've got the a skipped a note we've got the c we constructed it from this scale which is a c major scale but notice when i talk about the positions i'm not going to say it's a four of the c major scale generally you could and you could start to see it that way but you're usually not going to say it's the four uh it's the six and the one you could map it out that way and try to think of it that way to understand it but what you're really going to usually say is it's going to be the one three five it's the one three five not of uh the c it's the one three five of its related scale if we had an f major scale so to take a look at that real quick let me show you that we're going to go to the og tab over here and let's just change this worksheet to an f and an f is absolute position number nine so i'll just put a nine here and then we'll see our worksheet over here and it's now mapped out in the key of f and so now f is the one chord where if I construct it from the one chord, you get the F, A, and C. That same F, A, and C is what we built over here. We just built it from the C major. It happens to be also in the C major. But when we talk about it, we're going to be talking about it in terms of it being referenced to the relative reference of its major. And that's why we have the F, A, and C as the one, three, five also note that i didn't go down from one to two because when we go to two we're going to get to a minor and i'd like to first take a look at the one four five because those are going to be the major positions and it's useful to keep in your mind when you're kind of noodling around to play the majors together in the one four five a lot of blues stuff is played in like a one four five and it also will will have relative positions that you'll kind of recognize because you'll be playing the same uh, same relative positions when you look at the intervals between the one and the three and the five. So you'll recognize the shapes a little bit more easily on the guitar. Okay, so now let's, we have the one, three, five of the F. 
So it's mapped out over here. And just like we saw with the C, we can just grab any of these three items and we would be playing an F. Now there's one more thing we gotta, we gotta put out there with the F uh, in particular. And that is that you can think about this as the open position F in a sense. And in another sense, you can think about the fact that F doesn't actually have a true open position. In other words, uh, this I can think about this as my open position F because I'm playing the F. This is how you would play the F when you're in the, the, the frets of one through three. So if I'm switching from an open C to an open F within these frets, I have these opportunities to do that. So in that sense, it's an open position F. However, uh, in another sense, there is no open position F. And the reason is because when I play this position, I'm not, I don't need, I don't have to have any of the open uh, notes over here in order to play it. Usually with a lot of the open positions, the, the root note is actually uh, one of the open notes. Not always, but that's often the case. And there is no F over here in our open notes. Now you might say, well, yeah, we just did the C though, and there's no C in the open notes either. And we and the C is certainly an open position that we looked at last time. And that's true. And on the C, if I go over to the C, just to take a look at that, when we made this the C position, it looks like this. The reason it's an open position is because when you play it this way, you have to have that open G in order to make it work. Otherwise you would be missing the fifth. So the C, although the C is not the open note, is still an open position because one of the three notes that are required, this G when you're playing a normal C is an open note, right? So technically that would be an open position. Over here, when I play this shape, then which is the normal shape, you could open this up and play that A, but normally if you play this shape, there is no open string that you need in order for it to work. It's also important to note then that this is a bar shape. This is a classic type of bar shape. So you can think of it as an as an open F in one sense, but you also want to think of it as like an augmentation of this E. So an E looks like this. And so and so uh, when when you move that position up, you could see that shape that I'm fingering right here. You could see that same shape right here. I just moved it up from here to here. And the reason that's important to note is because we're actually playing, when we play this F open position, we're actually playing an E shape that has been moved up to basically a bar chord. And you wanna keep that in mind because when we start to talk about the caged system, when we start to talk about moving these shapes up, uh, you're, you're typically gonna to wanna to think about this as an E kind of shape that got moved up into a bar position. But you can also still think of it as an open position F because this is how you would play the F generally when you're in these one through three places when you're trying to switch from an open C to an open F. Okay, that said, then there's a couple different ways that we can play this. Now, the, the most difficult way to play this is the full bar chord. So this is a classic bar chord where we're, we're taking an E-shaped bar chord that looks like this. And instead of having the nut right there taking care of the barred strings, that's why the E is a is an we're gonna bar, we're gonna move it up to here, but then I have to bar this off. So see how that worked? I have now I had to switch my fingers from here. I can't. I go up to here, but now I have to I, I have to bar this off to fix it. So I got to switch these fingers to that, and then bar this off. Now that's a fairly difficult thing to to master. So you can practice that. If you can't master that, that's okay. There's all there's other ways to play this shape as well but you kind of want to see that as the as the full shape right there because you're playing all six strings this is a classic bar chord major bar chord shape just a couple techniques on the bar chords we I could talk about more of this later but you might sometimes people are too low on the bar chord like this and I, I find that if you put your finger as high as you need to if you if the meat of your finger is hanging over that's fine you might have to move your finger up, making it easier to ring out all the strings. You want to keep this as close to the fret as possible. It'll be easier to, to play that way uh, on that. And then you can try to ring those out. If you get that first, if you get the first one, two, three, four, 
to ring out and you can't get these last bits to ring out, you're still okay because you're playing, you're playing, you got to get to that uh, A. And, and the A is pretty easy to get to ring out because you're fingering the A. So if you can finger, if you get everything to ring out just to the first four strings, you're at least playing a full F, even if you don't get those last two strings to ring out. So that's, that's the, the main shape. Now also just note that this is a difficult bar chord because it's on the end. Like if you play that bar chord up here, sometimes it's easier because, um, because you're not, the frets aren't as spaced out. So if you don't have as big a hands, uh, then you might, it might be more difficult to play it here. But when people learn that F bar chord, they're often quite proud, uh, justifiably so, because it's a, a difficult thing. And then if you play the F like a different way or something like this or this, sometimes people look down on you. They're like, ah, you can't, that's because they can't grab the full bar chord. But just note that that's, that's not generally always the case that, that the full bar chord is the best way to go all the time because you don't have as much flexibility with the full bar chord sometimes. You can't do as hammer-ons as easy with your pinky. You have to be, have pretty strong hands to do a hammer-on and doing that kind of thing. Whereas if you grab it like this, you have a lot more flexibility. You, you're still using your pinky, but you, this is a lot easier to do than this. You have no leverage to do a hammer-on like this, whereas you do like this. So, so, so don't feel, I use this position a lot and even though I can do the bar chord because I find it more flexible. So don't let people discourage you, know, discourage you like, well, you're doing the cheater way of doing this. Well, no, it's a very useful way to do it. <laughs> even if you can't do the bar chord, it's still useful. Doesn't matter. All right, so, so that's the other way that we can look at it. We can look at it like this. And then if you analyze that, you could say, well, what if I pick this finger up and I put it down here? Now I'm just barring off that one string and I'm abandoning this top string. So that means I don't want it to ring out, then uh, I'm gonna mute it with my thumb. I typically use my thumb to mute it. You can also mute it with this finger. And now you've just got these strings. So I'm gonna say, copy, copy this and paste. So now, you're, now you would just be doing this bit right there, fingering that, and then you'd be muting the E and muting this string down here. That's still a pretty full uh, full chord, so it's still a pretty heavy chord, even though you don't have all five strings ringing out, you still have a, a, a good amount of the strings ringing out. Now the other way you can play it is this way, just grabbing these three, and, and this one, and this way, uh, notice what you have here is the F is the lowest note. So that's the advantage. So when you play the full bar chord, the advantage of the full bar chord is you get that heavy F on top, which really lays the bass foundation of it. Uh, if you don't, if you do it this way to get the F as the lowest note, you have to do it like this. And then you can mute this string with the, with the, with the, meat of your finger here, or you could try to reach it with your thumb. I tend to like to do stuff with my thumb, but if you're doing classical stuff, you probably want your thumb back here, in which case you don't want to hit this string up top, and then you can mute this string with the flat of your finger. And if you're doing picking stuff it's with or finger stuff, it's probably not as much of a problem. But I tend to like to just, in the evenings, just kind of strum away, so that means I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to mute whatever I don't want to ring out. So I use my thumb oftentimes just reaching over the top like that. So, so, that, so that gives you, so that's another way you can play it. Now, we learned last time that uh, right above the root note is the fifth, and that's why you can pick this one up. So, right, so, so if you play it like this, it's very common to play like this. And what that means is now you, it's nice, it's still an F, but now the top note is a C instead of an instead of an F. That's okay, you're still playing an F because you're still playing an F, A, and a C, but the top note is a C. Now the reason this is useful is because it fits this, I really like this shape because it fits your hand quite nicely, just like the C does. It just fits an easy shape on the hand. And, uh, and then it's also very easily movable because 
because uh, you're you're playing something that can move up, and all you're not showing any of the any of the open strings. So I find that to be really movable, and it's flexible because you can lift up you can lift up your fingers more easily than lifting up your fingers like this. Right? You could do it this way too, but it's more easy to do that. So then. So that, those are going to be the, the normal kind of fingerings that uh, you will see on this. You can also do the fingering down here. And so if you were playing the uh, F down here, you'd have these two strings and this one. And that could be a good fingering when you're playing on top of something else, where you don't want it to be really heavy. Like if this is a really heavy playing that with something else then you're going to drown out whatever else you're playing but if you're playing on top of something else and you want to play something that adds that doesn't drown completely drowned out and an f you can play something down here now just like what we saw before uh with the key of c we're we're now if we're thinking about this as the four of the key of c then all of the open notes are still good but the tricky thing about that is that you have to the, the, you would you would generally if you're in the key of C you'd be playing like a C right which would be here and then switching to an F and I'm gonna use this this shape because I think it's the easiest one to kind of start out with but you could do it you could do it this way see how that that switch is a little bit more difficult but you could do it because you get that heavy one if you're going from this C to this F or this C to this F that's an that's an easy switch to make it's it's very nice on uh on the fingering and then of course if we're in the key of c then all of the open uh notes will still work so meaning if i'm playing this f i can lift up a finger and reveal the open note so i can say okay what if i'm playing the f like this and i lift up that pinky well, if I lift up the pinky, I still have the F down here. So I'm still really playing like an F, but I'm revealing the D. And the D is kind of tensiony because that's the 13 if we're playing the 13 right there, if we're playing in the key of C. We'll talk about that later. But if you're playing in the key of C, it should still be something you can do, right? It won't be out of touch totally. And then you could do it here and you can say, well, what if I pick up this A? I pick up my finger, well then you revealed a G, which is like the nine when we're thinking of it as the four of uh, the key of C, right? And then I can say, well, what if I picked up this uh, C? Then, you can, then you're gonna be revealing the B, which is like a seven if we're thinking of it in terms of the four of uh, the key of C. So you can start to play. Normally, you'd want to be going from the C because the C is your center still if I'm thinking about playing in the key of C. And then you can noodle around there. Right, and then go here. Back to the C. I'm just lifting up fingers, right? <laughs> back, back to the F. testing out what it sounds like if I lift up fingers and I arpeggi or I arpeggiate it and whatnot and have different strumming styles as I go from the C to the F and then of course when you're using a C you could do a different C you can do it like this notice another way you can play the F is just these three notes so I could go from here C try different different basically strumming patterns there now now note that if you're just playing the key of f but you're thinking about it as though you're in the key of c right then like you're just playing the key of f but you're not really going to a c you're just doing this but then you're revealing notes that are in the key of c uh what you're doing what you're doing there is playing basically 
you're basically playing a different mode. So in other words, this is easier, I think, to look in terms of the circle. So here's our, our notes in the key of C in the format of a circle, the one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And usually we're focused around the C if we're playing the major scale in the key of C major. But if we keep going back to an F, we're just basically playing an F and then noodling around in the notes that are all in the key of C, you're basically playing a different mode. So it's pretty easy to do. You can, you can do that. It's a fun thing to do, but you want to keep in mind when you're practicing that, that you're basically playing the F as the four chord over, you know, the key of C. And if you're not going back to the key of C as the tonic, then you're basically kind of playing in a Lydian mode. So let's take a look at the modes on the right. The modes are mapped out on the right, on the right including the related minor, which is an A. And then we've got the Dorian. And then we've got the Phrygian. And then we've got the Lydian. So you can think of the Lydian now, which now has the F as the one, is, is basically related this Lydian mode, this F Lydian is related to the C major. So now you can think of it as the one, but all the notes in the scale are the same notes as uh, the key of C. So it's useful to kind of practice that way. You can kind of practice that. But when you do, when you do that, when you start uh, playing around like, and I'm just playing the key of, of F and I'm lifting up fingers, I have to be mindful that the reason all of these strings can fit the way I'm thinking about it right now, at least, is because I'm playing this chord in relation to the key of C as the four note in the key of uh, C. So that's useful to keep in mind. Now, you could say, well, what if I want to switch to the key of F? You could do that. And we'll talk about maybe looking at uh, the key of F later. But for right now, I just want to note that this shape is movable. So we, we looked last time in the key of C, if I went over here, that we can move this shape up to the one, four, five. So if you were playing the key of C, and we'll talk more about, about this kind of stuff later, but just uh, note that this shape, just something to play with. When we were playing the key of C, I could move up here to the four and the five. So if I moved it up to right there, now I'm playing the same shape, but now I'm playing an actual F chord. And then I can move it up here and I can say, okay, now I'm playing a G with the C shape. And that's a fun thing to just be able to, to play with, to move up and, and you can start to play with that using you know these same shapes. Now you can do that in the key of, when you're looking at an F chord, but if it's, if that F, like, like you, you can, move that F shape up to like a G for, you know, in order to pick up the G, or you can try to augment your mind to thinking about it as the key of F, which is kind of easier to do because then you can think of it as the one, four, five. So let's try to map that out just to kind of wrap our minds around that here. So I'm going to unhide from D to AK, right click and unhide. I'm going to go down to the bottom where we have some worksheets that have not been populated yet. And then I'm gonna to go to the right and let's, uh, so that looks good. So now I can go down here and say, I also need to unhide from 101 to 117. Actually, no, let's keep it, keep it here. And then I'll hide some of the fretboard. I'll hide from the 12th. We'll just go out some more frets to start off with. So I'll go from the 12th over to my worksheet right click and hide so there we have it and so i'm going to do the same thing uh to start out with i'm going to select the entire worksheet i'm going to scroll out a little bit and i'm going to map out the same thing we did before so i'll highlight the whole worksheet and i'm looking at the key of f let's copy this down here first i'm going to copy that so i can see where i'm looking at i'm looking at that four and then I'll map this out like we did before, selecting this area and then conditional formatting. This is gonna be equal to uh, an F, which I'm gonna make green and then okay. And then conditional formatting equal to an A, which will be red and then equal to 
a C, which I'm going to make yellow. And then I'll map that over here by saying that the F format paint is the one. And then the A format paint is the three. And then the C format paint is the five. So there we have it. So you can see this shape uh, up top. So there's going to be our our uh, starting shape. Now, if I move that up to a G, let's map out uh, the G, which is right next to it right here. And let's highlight the whole thing and just make that a different color. So I'm going to insert or not insert home tab format paint and let's say that this is going to be equal to, let's say, uh, a blue. Uh, let's say that's going to be the G is this. And well, let's actually do it on another worksheet. Let's do it down here. This will be easier to see. I'll paste it down here. And we'll look at the next one, which will be the G. And then I'll map it out. I'll map that out. So let's map that out. And so we'll go home tab format painter is going to be equal to the one of the fifth, which I'll make that uh, green. And then I'm going to say format painter of the B we will make that red format painter equal to the D we will make that yellow and OK. And so now I can see in this uh, G position right here, there's my shape as well. So same kind of shape. So I can see it right here when I'm playing the F and because the next uh, chord is a major as well, then I can follow, I can find my, what I want to do is, is follow the root uh, note here. So I'm looking at this F and I'm trying to find where the G is on that string. It's right there. So then I can move this shape up because this shape will be symmetrical around it. So if you're playing in the key of C, another way that you can play a G then, I could say, okay, this is, this is the four and the key of C, which is that F. And then I can move it right there. And so now you can kind of noodle around. Now, the G, another way you can play a G is like this, but it's useful it's useful to play it two ways right i can play it like this or i can play it like this and i can move up any of those any way i want to play it i can play the f like this and i can move that up to you know the g position and this g position i can construct it down and make it like that which is kind of the easier thing to start moving or i can play it like that same and where i can play it like that same kind of options we had before and then move this back down to the F. So if you're noodling around you can go from C to F to G this way. Or I can play just these three. So we can so we can kind of noodle that around. Now the, the next the next one is a C up top, the one. So so let's look at it. Let's look at this one. I'm gonna copy this and put that up top and say now we're looking at the one, looking at the C. So if I say, okay, let's map that out and say this is gonna be equal to the C green. And then I'm going to say, okay, and then this is going to be equal to the E, which is uh, that. And then I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the uh, G, which will make yellow. And let's, whoop, that's not yellow. And then I'll map this out like this. We'll say there's the green, there's the E, and there's the G, I should have done that up here too, maybe. There's this, the B, and then the D. So 
I could say, okay, well, we're like, if I'm looking at this string that had uh, the F on it, that string is what I'm kind of mapping this shape around when I look at it, you know, up here. If I'm moving that up, where's the C on that string? Uh, well, it's up here. So I'm going to say, okay, uh, if I scroll down, the C is up there, so I should be able to move the shape up to here. This is another way that we can play the C, right? So I can move it all the way up to that uh, eight position, and I should be able to play it that way. So if I was playing my F, I can move it up here to play the G, and then I can move it all the way up to the 10, and I get another kind of C voicing up top, which is nice. And of course you can move any of those shapes because this is basically a bar chord. So you could you could move it up here like this. You could move it up here like this. You could play just these three strings. And it's nice to be able to play this because then you can start to noodle around. Right, and I can do that same. Or I could just play noodle around within that shape. I added another note, which we'll talk about next time in the pentatonic shape. But but so so if you're playing in the key of C and you're playing and you're looking at that four, so you can play it from here, you can move it up here, or you're playing the related mode and using F as like the root in the mode. You can move to here, and then you can move up to here and start noodling around that way. Now one more thing just to just to note that if you wanted to just look at these movable shapes and you saw it in terms of being in the key of F, let's copy this down. I'll, I'll copy this down. We're running out of space. I'm going to unhide some cells, right click and unhide. And then I'm going to just copy. Uh, I'm going to copy from here down to here, copy and I'll paste that underneath. And I'm just going to change this then to the key of F. So we'll say I have my uh, my scale over here. Wait, I need to unhide again. I got to unhide between L and K. Right click and unhide. And then I'm going to scroll out a bit so I can see what's going on here. What is happening? That four key, I'm going to change to an F. So now I'm just going to change it completely to an F, which is a nine. So now I'm in the key of F. So now we've got our worksheet in, in the key of F. That's going to be our one note now. So now I'm going to hide everything again. So I'm going to go on over and I'll hide from 12 on over to here and right click and hide. And then let's look at this worksheet. I'm going to remove the conditional formatting that started by going do do and uh, remove, clear the rules, clear the rules. I've had it up to here with your rules. No more, no more, I say. Okay, how come I can't clear that one? I need to clear the conditional formatting this way. Okay, so now, now we can imagine moving this up if you were playing in the key of F just to play the one, four, five, which sometimes is pretty easy to kind of think about. You just want to convert your mind to saying, now I'm playing in the key of F and I'm going to move this up according to the one, four, five with it as the root versus me playing in the key of C, the F being the four note in there, right? So, so now I'm going to say, let's map this out. So let's try to do this piece by piece. So the F we saw starts from here to here. So I'll map that out and I'll say, this is going to be equal to this note as the green one. And then this is going to be equal to this note as the red one. And then uh, this is going to be equal to uh, equal to this note as the yellow one. So boom, boom, boom. And so there we have it. And I'll format paint that over here, F, and then the A and then uh, the C. So that would be position one if you're playing in the key uh, of F. So I say there's that and really it's 
you're kind of playing right here, really. And then I'm going to copy that and say, okay, I can do the one, four, five. So I can say the four is over here. And that's going to be on uh, the A sharp or the B flat. So you'd think, okay, right there, I should have uh, another position that I can kind of move up to. Don't let the sharps and flats scare you too much because they're just other notes. If you numbered them, it's a two, right? <laughs> it's just, so then I can see, and, and that's why the key of C is nice because you don't have the sharps and flats that kind of are a little intimidating. But if I moved it up here, I can say this is gonna be equal to then this one as the green one. And when I move it up there, it's the one relative to this chord. And then I'm going to say this is going to be equal to then the uh, D is going to be red. And then this will be equal to the F, which is going to be yellow and OK. And then I'll format paint this over here. Uh, I'm, I seem to be missing something. Hold on, I did it the wrong way. Let me undo, undo undo i need it to be that's the end point so it needs to be going facing this way all right let's do that again pardon me uh this is going to be equal to this which will be the green and then this will be equal to this which will be the red and then this will be equal to this which will be the yellow and boom and so now you've got the green, let's make that here. And then the this one, uh, the red, let's make that here. And then this one's gonna be this one, let's make that here, okay? And then I can try to do this one more time and say, okay, the next one is here on the C, the one, four, five relative positions and I can say, here's the key of C right there. And I can say, let's highlight this then and say conditional formatting equal to, if it's a C, now that's gonna be the green and then equal to, if it's the E, it's gonna be red. And then if it's equal to the G, it's gonna be yellow. Uh, hold on. It didn't do the yellow. If it's equal to G, it's gonna be yellow. All right, and then I'll have the same condition, the same formatting here. This is gonna be the C, this is gonna be the E, and then this is gonna be the G. So, so right, so now you can, you can do the same thing so now if I look at this first position, I'm looking at that root typically, or if you're playing it this way, you're usually looking at this as the root. If you're playing it this way, you're usually looking at kind of this string as the root, which is kind of what I'm looking at right now generally. And then if I moved it up to the next position, where is the root? It's up here on the eighth fret. That's where the next root is on this string. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom, moving it up to there. So you could start. up to there and then where's the next root happening on that string it's right here on the 10th fret so if this 8 9 10 I can move it up to here and you'll you'll see that these distances are, are relative to the 1 4 5 in the key of C uh, that we, we talked about so you can start to see where how far up the fretboard is the 1 4 5 if you start in like the open position uh, for example and then of course you can do the same thing like this the full bar chord which you could practice playing it's a more difficult thing to hold down typically and now i'd say this is that one two three four the sixth fret that's the next where you get to the next root right so one two three four five six boom and you can see when i play that that's the same as what i did before i just put my finger down here and mute the top so when i do that then this is the main root versus this being the main root these are the same notes and then when I move it up to here, moving it up to the eighth, eight right there. And so this is the same root as this. So this is the same thing as this. You can also play it with just these three strings and mute everything else. Right? And so 
that's so when you start to move that th that's useful to do just remember whether or not you're you're still in the key of C uh, in which case you'll play the the positions relative to the key of C right you'll be going from the four to the five to the one and you can think of that at, in the key of C and you can think of that as a different mode if you wanted that would be the modes that you would be in you could do it that way uh, or you can switch the key entirely which isn't our point of focus now but it's a useful thing to to know just switch in your head that now you're you're playing this in the key of F F now being the one chord and you're playing the relative four and five which will have the same shape up on the neck of the guitar here.